right, so it's been uh, 15 years plus since Tim Ferriss, who I've had the privilege to interview, uh, wrote the four-hour work week. And uh, boy, it was met with, you know, a whole lot of reaction, a lot of cynicism, but then it just really went bananas, you know, sold millions and millions of copies. And and then it's been misinterpreted. It ended up use, getting used uh, as an example in uh, The Office the wrong way. Um, and the subtitle of the book uh, really does break down what Tim was trying to do. And so I wanted to reveal it to you. Uh, his subtitle was Escape the 9 to 5, Live Anywhere, and Join the New Rich. Now, folks, that's a fan-freaking-tastic subtitle. <laughs> You're talking to hit a lot of emotions there. Escape the nine to five. That means I don't have to be there for a set amount of time. I get to decide. Live anywhere. I can work anywhere, which means I can live anywhere. And join the new rich. I want to be rich, baby. All right? So those three little statements in that subtitle all hit the nerve, the greatest nerve that you can hit when trying to speak to, connect to, capture the attention of a human being. And it is freedom. Period. Freedom. Escape the nine to five. Free to work where I want to work, when I want to work, how I want to work. It's freedom. Live anywhere. I'm free, baby. I can go live here. Then I can go live there. I can live anywhere. I'm free. There was a great song, Alex, that you got to actually download. Because it's a very little-known band called the Soup Dragons. And they had a song, and I believe that the title of the song is Free. Uh, but I listened to it. This is, uh, this is like 1991, 92. I started listening to it. And the lyrics are, um, uh, the, the chorus that was just so awesome and I loved it was because I'm free to do what I want any old time. And and that's just one part of the chorus, but that chorus in that song from the Soup Dragons sums it all up. I'm free to do what I want any old time, right? I'm not constricted by someone else's schedule. And someone else's agenda. Oh, woo, get that. Did you hear that? That's freedom. I mean, freedom can be expressed in a lot of different ways. We're not talking politics right now. We're just talking about true fundamental freedom at its base is I'm not constricted by someone else's schedule and someone else's agenda. The Soup Dragons, they figured it out. So how do we achieve that kind of freedom that Tim Ferriss was writing about, the four-hour work week? Now, to give you the backstory on this very, very briefly, and then we'll dive into uh, what, what you need to do to truly experience freedom in your profession, freedom in your work, because that's really what I want to hone in on. What he basically did, if you're not familiar with the book, is he was running his own company, and he was just, you know, he'd go on vacation and work 10 hours in a cafe. And he was like, I got to stop this. I can't do this. I'm essentially imprisoning myself. And so he radically changed how he did his business. He he reduced the amount of clients that he had. He outsourced, outsourced, outsourced. And got to a point where the thing was running on the rails. And he'd answer an email once every couple weeks. Okay, more on that in a moment. So. That's the concept. Gave a few talks on it. And it was all about systems and efficiencies and focus, right? So what should I be focused on? Develop systems to be able to be efficient with the focus. And that's that's my, just wrap it up quickly. Now, how do you achieve more in less time? 
That's how we set this up at the top, top of the show. And I wanted to give you the context for probably the most popular book ever written on this, this idea. But how do you achieve more with less? Okay, first, you must start with clarity for purpose in moving forward. Clarity for purpose. Clarity for purpose. In other words, prioritization. I've got to get clear on what my priorities are to be on purpose, to work on purpose. Prioritization. All right. And now you have to say, okay, in order to be on purpose and work on purpose, what tasks, activities should I be focusing on? personally. So what Ferris did was he removed a lot of the tasks that he was doing in his business and he farmed it out. Okay. So what he essentially did was he delegated it. Now in today's world, you got another option for delegation. It's called automation. So do I have to do this? Okay, so let's just look at my job for a moment. I can delegate things to the team. Okay? Like editing social media videos. I can delegate uh, producing the show to Alex. But I have to host the show. Okay? Okay? I can delegate things around books, but I got to write my book. I can delegate things around research around a speech I'm giving, but I have to give the speech. So this is that simplification of what do I have to do, okay? So, so you eliminate, delegate, automate from there. What most people who figure this out, they do a version of the Pareto principle, which says, I'm going to spend 80% of my time on the top 20% of my priorities. You don't have to do it that specific, but that's the idea. That's the idea because here's what happens. You get radically clear on your priorities. So here's a four-step process for you to achieve more with less time. And I just kind of unpacked it, but I'll give it to you in four words. You ready? Prioritization is the first thing I got to do. Second, I begin the elimination process, eliminating things from my focus and my time. And I'm making the decision here, right? And the way I'm eliminating them from my time is through delegation and automation, right? That's simple. You can get a whole lot more done in a whole lot less time if you'll take the time to really streamline and get radically on purpose for what you're supposed to be doing day in and day out on a professional level.